I'm Melissa Sweezy. And I'm Nate Reisman, and this is You Can See Me in the Dark. You Can See Me in the Dark. The Blair Witch Project. Yes. So what are your thoughts on The Blair Witch Project? I actually have never seen The Blair Witch Project. All the way through. I've seen bits and pieces of it, but... Okay. <laughs> not that okay all of it i'm trying to process that i definitely have seen the ending of the of the blair witch project okay so you've seen the ending yes i've seen the ending like the spoiler alert do you don't know if you still need a spoiler alert like 20 years after the movie came out No, that's it's on you Um, by then but like the boy in the corner yes yeah but that's the thing is i couldn't understand i don't really understand what that meant well right because you just saw the ending um yeah i i I think i remember a tent scene Mm -hmm. they're like in a tent and Mm -hmm kids are like scratching at the tent or something Uh like that Mm -hmm. you should like it's i mean i think we have the benefit of knowing that it wasn't real but like when this movie came out in what 19 99 like yeah 99 no one like i think we kind of knew but like there was there was a big question mark like yeah was this a real movie or not um and that that kind of brings us to, I think, our segue for today's episode. Yeah. With John, because he takes us back to that same time period where the Blair Witch wasn't quite yet the phenomenon that it became. You ready? You ready for John's story? I am ready for John's story. Okay. It's a good one. It's a really good one. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy. Now, I'm I'm not one to say that, you know, I've, I've always been into the paranormal or ghosts and all this. I, I didn't, I didn't think twice about it before 1999 when the Blair Witch Project came out. And me and some of my friends got turned on to that. But another strange thing about that is before the release of Blair Witch, which was in 99, a year before that, I had a cop, I had a two and a half hour copy of the movie that was just on a black VHS tape that a friend of mine brought back from New Orleans and uh, they were just completely freaked out by it and was like we we have to take this tape you know back to Memphis and show our buddy Pickle and um, so they they brought it back from New Orleans and we watched that thing and you know, this is way before, you know, the the press release or knew nothing about any of this. So we get to watching this thing. And of course, we we think that it's real. We have no idea what it is. I mean, and it's it's terrifying. And we're like, is anybody doing anything about these people? Is are they still out there? Does anybody know about this? Where did this tape come from? What is this? And I mean, I would I would show it to everybody that came over to the house. Like, look at this thing, you know. And word started spreading about it. And so, um, my buddy JD, you know, who was uh, partners with me on my cable access show, he uh, he was like, we should we should really we should do a show and go to Burkittsville, and and go into the Black Hills and, you know, see more about this. And I'm like, I don't want to go to Burkittsville. It's like, this is not, it's just not something I want to do. You know, I, I might be into doing some kind of ghost hunt type show, but I don't want to go all the way up there. And I bet we could find something here in town that's just as, as creepy. I, I bet you we could. And, um, and I don't remember how I ran across it, but... It was something. It was some little short-lived little uh, little magazine, and this is what I saw in in the uh, in the little article, and it had a picture of the building, which is um, this building used to. It's not there anymore, and right now it's right now it's just a little grassy area. It's a little rectangle. It's about the size of Ernest. Uh, it's about the same size as Ernestine, Ernestine and Hazel's, and um, right now, like I said, it's, right now it's just a little green rectangle of grass. Got a little fence around it. No one's touched it since it burnt down years and years ago. And there was a uh, 
there was a picture of this place and you know this was back when there was nothing down there even the train station was abandoned So anyway, this here's the little thing, the little the little piece that I found in that magazine that says originally built in 1876 by Stephen Martin Noyo, it's undergone numerous changes through the years. Once housing a brothel upstairs and a moonshine still in the basement, the South End has always found a way to survive. The new and improved South End features a pool table, a projection screen and live bands. But don't fear the changes. Be leery instead of the South End's resident ghost former prostitute named Vera. And so I, I show this to JD. I was like, see, I told you we could find something in Tatlas, so let's just go and investigate and explore this. I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that'd be great. So one night we decided to, because it's, you know, it's a bar and, you know, they've got bands and stuff, so we'll fit right in. And uh, so we go down there and we're sitting at the bar and I, I get to talking to the bartender and I'm like, so is this, I hear this place is haunted? And little did I know the stories he was about to start telling us. And, you know, there was, you know, this happened in the bathroom here one night, and then this happened in the kitchen, you know, and I come in to open the bar, and there's plates all over the kitchen, broken on the floor, you know, uh, women are constantly getting their hair pulled in the bathroom. And then he starts telling us about the basement. Um, Now, like I said, this is... I'd, I've tried to do some research on this building, and it's really hard to find anything. Um, but as the art, the article says that it, it was built in 1876, and I'm a little bit of a, a yellow fever fanatic. And you know, there were you know, the the big yellow fever epidemic was in 1878, but that was the that was the big one. There were several before that. And, you know, the spot where the spot where the arcade is right across the street, which is where the escape rooms are now. I I don't know this for a fact, but other people have told me that um, way back before the uh, Calhoun station, which became the central station, was built, that there was a cemetery that used to sit there on that corner. And up the hill was kind of the potter's field so you've got the cemetery here and up on the hill is the potter's field now if that's the same location where Martin Noya built that building he would have built it on top of the potter's field and so David the bartender you know he, he begins to tell us that yeah you know the, there's a dirt floor in the basement and you can go down in that basement and all you got to do is just kick the dirt around and bones start coming up out of the start coming up out of the dirt so we made me and jd you know went home that night and we were like hey, i think it would be really cool if you know we did kind of a a document like for the cable show we'll do you know just an entire episode of like in- investigating this place and so we hooked it up with the bar and we came in to the bar one night and went down into the basement and we went we went down into that basement around 11 o'clock on I think it was either Friday or Saturday night and we didn't come out of that basement until four o'clock that morning now it, back in this was in this was in 2000 so. 20 years ago I was a little bit naive to the things you know what we were actually doing Um, because I'd I'd never done anything like this before I didn't know that much about it and so we're down there and I mean we we dug up bags of bones so our plan was was to uh, to take these bones and maybe have them analyzed you know in our dumb little thinking like we'll have these analyzed and we'll label them and you know we'll do shots and pictures of it and we'll put it in the we'll put it in the in the video and you know it'll be really cool so i take these you know, we take these bags of bones back to my house yeah right <laughs> 
but I'm really not, you know, like I said, I'm so naive and so uneducated about this stuff that, you know, I just wasn't thinking. And so I've, I've got the bones at the house now, and I guess it was only a, a few days later that it started getting really interesting. Um, things around my house began to happen. If I was a ghost and I knew where my remains were and someone came along and picked up all of my stuff and took it somewhere, I'm probably going to follow them too just to see what's going on. And uh, so, you know, but back in 2000, you know, I had a, I, I played in a band and, you know, our our band room was at the house. And so I, I constantly had... I, I was in my 20s, so, you know, I, I kind of had the party house a little bit. And so people were always over at my place, in and out, in and out, in and out. And so it wasn't it wasn't strange to me, you know, to you know, be in the house, you know, and, and there's, you know, always some kind of constant activity going on. Um, and I just I remember the, the first thing that happened that that struck me that, you know, something something's not right is I was taking a shower and no one was there and I could just hear I could hear voices in the house as if you know there were you know and there's there's been plenty of times I've been in the shower and people have been over to the house you know and I can hear people talking in the house and whatnot and well this was that but except no one was there and you know you'd hear a, a thud or a, a crash or or something and there were and it would always mess with me when I was in the shower. And, I mean, there were there were a handful of times that I'd come, because I don't know if, if someone really is breaking into the house, if someone is in the house. I don't know if it, what it is, which time it's happening is real or not. So there were a handful of times, you know, I would come flying out of the shower with my pistol, you know, just because I don't know. And, I mean, this it happened a lot, but... And it was when other people that would come over to my house that didn't know anything about the bones, um, that they would have something happen to them. That you know, I thought, well, okay, I'm I'm not going crazy. You've heard of shadow people. Um, I, I never do anything about that, or you know, never never experienced anything. But, you know, it, our, our classic example of a ghost is, you know, like, is white wearing, you know, it's like Casper, you know, is white and wearing a sheet. And, like, that's not it. It's, it's black and it moves about a thousand miles an hour. It's really, it's really unnerving when you, when you see it for the first time, you know. And it's, it's never, you never see it directly. It's always out of the corner of your eye. And I know this sounds crazy, but I mean, it just, I knew that I wasn't crazy when people that didn't know about it, like I said, didn't know about it, and they would see it. You know, you we would be sitting on the couch watching a movie or something, and I could just, I could tell when some, when it happened to someone because their, their entire face would just change, and they would, you know, jerk to one side and, you know, look down the hallway and not say a word. And, you know, and me and a couple of my friends that, had experienced things you know when we would see them react like that it was like you uh you just saw something didn't you and they would be like yeah is there somebody else here it's like no there's not <laughs> i remember it was always in the same area it was always right there in that in that doorway that something would seem to happen and you would just see that that just flash of black like just move like just someone's shadow just moves through the room really quickly but the major one that i remember that i did actually see i thought i saw, it was in a reflection and this one really this is the night that the bones went back to the south end is I had, I had gotten home from work and I was making something to eat and um, 
like I said, you know, people were always in and out of my house. And I was in the kitchen and I'm making something to eat. And I thought I heard a car pull up in the driveway and the door shut. And so I was like, oh, I don't, nobody told me they were coming over, but people would stop by all the time, but unannounced anyway. So I walk out of the kitchen and I walk into the living room and I, you know how you stick your fingers into the blinds to open them up just to look out? Well, when I did that, I opened the blinds up and in the reflection of the glass, I saw this black image move behind me. And no one was at the house, so that that car pulling up and that door slamming, I don't know what, what that came from, what it was, but something drew me into that living room. And when I saw that black mass just flash behind me I, I damn near came out of my skin I was like I'd never seen anything like that before in my life and I said to hell with eating right now those bones are going back to the south <laughs> I didn't call or anything I just showed up and David was behind the bar and I was like these are going back down man these, there's just too much there's too many weird things happening I came home and uh, there was a big four by eight mirror that hung up in this bathroom. And I came home and I, I was standing in the kitchen. And I looked down the hallway and I saw that there was just all this like garbage in the floor in the bathroom. I'm like, well, what is this? And so I get down to the bathroom and the horror show that I see that four by eight mirror has come off the wall, broke the sink in half. And as if it was like a knife cut straight through the back of, of the toilet. And there are microscopic, small, medium, and large pieces of that mirror smashed into oblivion all over this bathroom. Along with the toilet and the sink. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, I just, I didn't even look at it. <laughs> I just turned... I think I left it there for like two days before I even messed with it because it was just such a nightmare. I mean, it looked like somebody had gone into that bathroom with a sledgehammer and just destroyed it. And, you know, I, I'm just telling people about this. I guess they're the ones that put it in my mind. It's like, oh, some ghost. Some ghost that did it. <laughs> so, yeah, it, uh, it, it went on and on. And, I mean, it, it finally calmed down years after. But... I mean, it it broke me of of ghost hunting. Once you've had it follow you, you don't want it following you again. Not like that. Thank you, John, for telling your story. And if you love that one, he's got a bonus story for you over on our Patreon site. Become a member at patreon.com slash you can see me in the dark. <gasps> You Can See Me in the Dark was produced by me, Melissa Sweezy, and Nate Reisman. Audio recorded and mixed by Nate Reisman. Thanks, as always, to Running Pony for their production help, and you can find all of our scary music on FirstCom. If you have a scary true story to share, we would love to hear from you. Give us a shout at youcansemeinthedark at gmail.com.